and she, like most women, wanted to be beautiful. And hair is very much a part of how women see their beauty. And so she said, I was so ashamed of my frightful appearance that I prayed to the Lord for a solution. And one night in a dream, a big African man appeared to me and told me what to mix up for my formula. And she said she mixed that formula together, she applied it to her scalp, and her hair began to grow back faster than it had ever fallen out. Madam Walker, I think, is very much a pioneer of what is the modern cosmetics and hair care industry. Her big competitor, Annie Malone, as well as women like Helena Rubinstein and Elizabeth Arden, really founded what has become a multi-billion dollar business. A hundred years ago when she started her company, there was no national and international cosmetics um, industry. People, now we go into the store and we see 30 kinds of shampoos and conditioners and ointments and gels and all kinds of other hair products. But a hundred years ago, those products didn't exist. And these women developed an industry. Men weren't paying any attention to the industry. These women saw a vision, they saw a need, and then they created something. Madam Walker, uh, in addition to starting her company, really created jobs for thousands of women, African-American women who otherwise would have been sharecroppers and maids and laundresses. She trained other women and that really very much was um, part of a secret to her success. She called her beauty school really a college. It in fact was not a college in the way we think of a four-year institution, but it was a six weeks course. And at that point, most Americans didn't even have eighth grade education. So for a woman to be able to go to a school to learn her methods, to learn some of her sales techniques, to learn about marketing, that was equivalent to the kind of education that would help someone become self-sufficient. She became a millionaire, but to me what really makes her legacy lasting is that she used that money to make a difference in her community. And she was very strategic about the gifts that she gave. She provided scholarships for African students at Tuskegee with the hopes that they would go back and make a difference in their communities. At one time, like Oprah, she wanted to found a school for black girls in Liberia. She was never able to do that, but she had that vision because she thought that educating young women would make a difference for that society. She gave money to, the, to black YMCAs and YWCAs, to orphans' homes because she had been an orphan, to um, senior citizens' homes. And really, from a political standpoint, she became very involved with the NAACP's anti-lynching movement and contributed $5,000, which was the largest gift the NAACP had ever received. During World War I, she was very outspoken about the rights of African-American soldiers who were being discriminated against in the Army on bases in the U.S., as well as uh, while they were serving in France. Now, this made her attorney very nervous. Her attorney said, you shouldn't get involved in politics. The government will circumscribe you. They will put restrictions on you. You can really just do the things that you do and don't become controversial. But she really felt that, you know, what's the point if I can't make a difference, if I can't speak out? And so she was really very willing to do that. In fact, in 1917, the year before Mary Kay was born, Madam Walker had her first convention of her sales agents, a 200 black women who came from all over the country to Philadelphia. And at that convention, she said to the women, I want you to understand that as Walker agents, your first duty is to humanity. I want others to look at us and realize that we care, not just about ourselves, but about others. And at the end of the convention, the women sent a telegram to President Woodrow Wilson urging him to support federal legislation that would make lynching a federal crime. So she was very willing to use her clout and her wealth and her influence to be politically risky, to make a difference.